Welcome back to Scarf. I kind of stopped in an arbitrary place uh, just after I got through this ocean here. I haven't done anything since the last episode. Uh, I believe that I'm here to get some ability that will let my scarf catch onto hooks and let me jump across big wide gaps. That's my guess. And so let's... Uh, because the, le the structure of the previous area seemed to be built around the idea that all of my exits required me to swing on hooks... And this was the one direction I could go that didn't involve that. So this must be where I get that ability. So I'm on a mission now to learn how to swing on hooks. That is a... That is a deep hole. Whew, I am not looking forward to trying to go back the way I came because that bouncy pad... Um, is kind of volatile. So, La Coalition is, is asking, so your guess is that you're going to be basically Spider-Man, but with a scarf? Uh, kind of, I well, I don't think I'd, it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man's whole deal is he can put, uh, he can swing from literally anything. Um, I think I'm going to be able to swing in very specific places, which is a different kind of deal. And, though, actually, I mean, that is an interesting sort of... Um, distinction between different types of platform games where it's like there's some that are very puzzle based like this one where it's all about getting very sort of sharply limited abilities and then figuring out what the designer of the level expected you to do with that ability whereas something like um you know like spider-man is much more about uh, you know giving you a very broad toolbox it can be used anywhere and letting you sort of puzzle out uh you know how to use it just broadly uh in order to get around and do cool things and it's less about specific puzzles and more about, like, just, you know, ha having uh, an interesting power set that lets you do a lot of stuff. Okay, so I'm looking at this crystal like it's supposed to be something, but I, I don't know what it's supposed to be, so... Ah! All right. And, ah, okay, we got another lever down here. I don't know if they expected me to find this lever first or last. It might be that they expected me to find it first. You know, okay, so the the, the co like sort of the cog grooves on the side look like in another game I would be able to jump up and grab them. And so, like, as a Dying Light 2 player, I'm like, how come I can't just, you know, jump from ledge to ledge? It's kind of hard to sort of decode your brain from the sort of visual language of one game and get used to another. Okay, so that was a jumping challenge where some of the jumps were better with a single jump and some of them were better with a double jump and I had to sort of figure it out on the fly, which was kind of cool actually. Okay, so I've got this now? And, whoa, oh, oh! It was interesting. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so, so this thing sitting on this amplifier. Oh, and now I can't get back up to it. I can't. I can't reinstall. Oh, never mind. I can reinstall it. Let's let's just see what happens when I reinstall it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, something. The thing I was wondering. Did I just make like a one-way decision? Or is this amplifier... Oh, yeah. I've Oh, I've always had a bubble above me. I just didn't realize it. Actually, let me... No, wait a minute. This is where I came from, right? It is. So, wait. So, how come this... How come this was in the air before? But now it's not. Was the amplifier more powerful before? But once I grabbed this thing, I... Because I was about to say, I was about to compliment the game by saying that, you know, they didn't just come up with a one-off puzzle. They came up with a set of rules. And just the world is always obeying those rules. But actually, it feels like it's a little bit more arbitrary than that. Because I should have been able to put that back and just reverse everything. So does this mean that I have to... Okay, so that's why... There was less jumping necessary for this puzzle because I'm supposed to cross back with the bubble and I can't jump with the bubble. Am I going to have to do that bouncy pad thing with the bubble? 
trying to remember the layout of this now. Okay, we've got a bouncy pad right here. Um, all right. Part of me is kind of like... Can I just... Okay, I'm going to step off this and see what happens. Wee! Nope, that's not allowed. Oh, crap. Have I just... Okay, whew. Wait. Okay, what? I I feel like I almost broke the level by, by leaving that thing in the place where I died. Wow. All right. Um, okay, so part of me was assuming that I needed to use this bouncy pad to bring it back, but it's it's elevated just so that I can't get up there. So, okay, so I... It's kind of weird. Am I wrong that I need to take this anywhere? I mean, I did... Okay, the other thing I was reacting to before was that it felt a little bit like 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 sort of unflooding that room didn't seem like it was logically connected to those boats rising out of the water. Like, I couldn't quite tell why those two events were connected, but it could be that those boats rising out of the water was the only effect that this thing wanted to have and really just carrying that bubble just whatever, I'm supposed to just leave it behind and it doesn't matter. It's weird that they let me carry it so far, considering that I wasn't going to be able to bring it all the way out. That's that's an odd, like, like, it felt like they deliberately set up that sliding platform puzzle to allow me to bring the bubble out. Except then there was a wall on the other side of it that stopped me from bringing the bubble out. Like, why did they let me take the bubble as far as they did? They could have just made that room impossible to exit with the bubble and it would have been clearer what I was trying to do. Like, I could imagine beating my head against the problem of trying to bring that bubble across that gap with the bouncy pad, I could have puzzled, I could like mess with that for a long time before realizing that I don't need the bubble. It would have been much clearer if they, ha if they had not let me leave the room with the bubble. Okay, so this is going to be the thing that teaches me about my hook swinging. Okay, so now I've got a new ability. Wait, what? I don't have the wings in? Oh, you're kidding me. What? I don't have the wings anymore. Okay, I sorry. I didn't see the button prompt fast enough. I'm supposed to hit Y. Okay, so was that just a special case, or... Because I've got my scarf back now, and I just... Okay, that was... That was an odd way to teach that. That was a really odd way to teach that. Having it work a different way the very first time, and then never using it that way again? So, like... I lost my scarf, and I was required to use the Y button to swing across that gap, and I could not use my wings. Which, and I get it. Like, I understand. Like, they did, like because it would be uh, a temptation for a player who doesn't understand what's going on to just try to use the wings to cross that gap again and again and again, and never realizing they needed to hit the Y button. But like, I don't know. I feel like there was probably a better way to teach that without violating the way it works the very first time and then having it work a different way the rest of the time. Like that is nothing wrong with it. I did understand it. Like I understood it immediately as I was doing it. So it's not crazy, but I'm it's 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 inelegant. Like I'm kind of surprised that that was the answer. Okay, so now I'm back here. So I can go that way. That's the most obvious way to go, but I'm kind of I'm kind of actually curious about, like, back here, there was another way I could go, too. So maybe this is... 
I don't know. Oh, wait. Aha. This might end up being... Remember that other alternate path I tried to take that had, like, shadow darkness stuff that sort of freaked out my dragon scarf? This might be another example of that. We'll have to see. Oh, I'm also curious, like... It was try it was kind of giving me the impression that when I stepped into shadow, that was what made the dragon freak out. But I'm in shadow over here and the dragon's not freaking out. So maybe it wasn't the shadow that did it? I don't know. There is a lot of shadow in here. We'll have to see. Okay. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, yeah. Oh! Yeah, the dragon's like, nope. Not going in here. Okay, so I'm gonna not press Y for a second and just see... Okay, so when I don't press Y, I'm just knocked out of the place. But if I do press Y a whole bunch... That wasn't really clear from what I was doing it before. I didn't feel like I was really making an effort, but yeah, okay. That... Because I wasn't getting any feedback for actually pressing the Y button. I was just being told that's what I needed to be doing during that period of time. But darkness was kind to nomads. Darkness gave rebels their shield. The truth shall be unveiled. Wait, so am I just collecting darkness on my feet? Okay, so one thing I really like about this game is how much they're putting on the character. Like, my, like each time I gain a new power, each time I gain a collectible, one of these darkness collectibles, my character physically changes as a result. And so I can kind of... It's pretty satisfying to be making this kind of progress. And also, I do really like how, like, obvious they're making these little side, uh, objectives. Like, so far I have not been at all confused about what direction was a direction I'm meant to go, what direction is a side direction. Uh, and it hasn't been, like, frustratingly hidden. Um, so I, I'm feeling, I don't, I'm not feeling like I'm missing a bunch of, I don't know, potential progress. And also, like, and now I understand it's getting close to one of those little dark collectibles. <laughs> that makes the dragon freak out, not being in shadow, then they do tend to still associate it with shadows in the environment. It's not going to be every shadow in the environment. Because honestly, that would be a pretty big constraint on the artist if they couldn't let shadows fall in places where the player needed to go. By the way, the Coalition is pointing out that, you know, there's lots of different ways they could have done these hook swings, and, the, and he's relieved that they didn't have you just grab them with the scarf around your neck and dangle from your neck like you're being hanged, that that would have been a little weird and disturbing, that instead, you know, you've got these wraps on your wrists and you're using them to sort of create a, uh, a rope to swing from. So the Coalition suggests, what if picking up these little black things is actually a bad thing? Like, if you pick up a lot of them, you actually become a bad guy at the end. And if you pick up a few or none, then you get the good ending. That is fa I kind of like the idea of me being sort of a collectible hoarder being bad at the end, like, I, I don't know, it has a little bit of, like, a Shadow of the Colossus vibe to it. I, I, I'm kind of amused by that idea. Okay, so it looks like on a given jump, I, what I tried to do a, a wing flap on both of those swings, but I could only do it once on the first one. I was wondering if swinging would reset my wing flap, but it doesn't. I only get one of them on any, you know, basically I can't do a second one until I've landed again. So it's good to understand the rules. So this area has a shape that makes me feel like in any other game this would be a combat challenge. Ooh, dark. But there's no dark collectible in here, so we're probably still fine. Get some kind of big door going on, though. Ooh. Oh. 
Oh, here's the guy I'm following. There's an underwater thingy. A magic wand? Is that what that was? Okay, there's a lot going on here, and I have no context for the... That first shot made sense. Like, I knew where it was relative to me, and I knew what it was revealing. Um, all the rest of those... Oh, it's the lever for this. That's what's underwater. All the subsequent shots, I had no idea what I was looking at or what it could possibly mean. Alright, so what's this? It's some kind of thingy. One interesting thing is I don't have the only action that I can take independently is my jump. Uh, there's no attack. There's you know, I guess there's a run too, uh, but that just sort of modulates my navigation. Um, and so like, when I encounter something and I'm not sure what to do with it, there's actually not that many different things that could be it. Like if if it doesn't prompt an interaction, like that those like little uh, that pair of pillars didn't prompt an interaction, that means there isn't one, you know? Uh, at least until I cause there to be one, maybe this is going to be the ability that unlocks them. Uh-oh. Is this a slingshot? Oh, I thought I could just walk right into it and make it work. Okay, as fun as it would be to just walk into them, to like back up against them and make them work, either way, whether that's a, a thing or not, it's still pretty cool that, that, that it works that way. I like that they just took this idea of you've got a scarf that can be used for different stuff. And they're coming up with some really sort of clever ways to use it. And, you know, I mean, if they had made the analog version of that, it probably could have been easily very frustrating. So I'm okay with it being sort of a binary on-off thing. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm either using this or I'm not. Okay, so I see some stairs here, which tell me this might be the way I need to go. Should I just jump down? Okay, yeah, so it feels like I need to jump down. And then the question is, how do I get back to where I can install this lever? Oh, gosh, okay. Um. <laughs> okay, I need to um, not do that again until I'm really sure that I'm doing it correctly. So it prompted me, when I came over to this platform, it prompted me to drop the lever. So it seems like I can go this direction with lever. This is all org made in such a way that I probably can, but... I think it was prompting me to drop it because there's some reason that I might want to go this way. And this is a place I can't take the lever. Okay, so, oh, this is just the way back. This is the way back without the lever, if for some reason I want that. But I don't think I do, actually. So now I've just got to figure out the right timing for crossing this crumbly platform. I think maybe I want to do it at the same time that the other platform is approaching me. Yeah. Oh, just barely. Alright. Alright, so it's suggesting dropping it again. Okay, which makes sense, because I need to get it over here, right? But... And this thing looks like it's going to descend next time we... We 
drain this. And I'm wondering, like, huh. Oh, wait, do I need to go back here? No. No. I d oh, I know. I know what's going on. Okay, sorry. Somebody in the chat probably already figured this out. Um, yeah, so Cole Lucy is pointing out, no, that's where you got this thing in the first place. That's not where you're taking it. And that is true. I'm taking it upstairs. So that's why we've got this other route. Is because... Yeah. Now that I've placed it on that platform that we watched float on the water and come down when the water went down. Now I need to raise the water again and bring that thing back up with the lever on it. And that control, I believe, was over here? Boing. It was, it was that lever over there, right? Notice he jumps into position. That's so that they can do it no matter where he's standing. So no matter what angle you approach that in, he's going to jump straight up into the air, slide and rotate into position. Okay, I thought I'd already pressed it, but I guess not. And it brings the lever up. Nice. Okay. So yeah, so I can like stand right here, and then he always jumps right into position. I'm actually, let's actually face absolutely the wrong way and see what it looks like when he jumps into position. So yeah, so he jumps and turns around. So that's just a really simple way for a programmer and an animator to just sort of handle all of the weird situations where the player comes at it at a different angle. Instead of like popping him in or something, they like just have him get into the air and then you do whatever you want to him in the air and then land him in the right spot. It's a little tougher with a game that's more grounded where you don't have a little floaty jump. Uh, we have to like sometimes do like a foot shuffle on the character while they're moving in an arbitrary direction and you just sort of wiggle their feet and hope that it looks like something real is happening. So maybe this is actually going to be more of a... I thought this was going to be um, messing with the water more, but this is actually probably maybe extending a bridge? Oh wait, did that thing not animate? I think that the lever didn't animate as expected. Uh oh, this guy might not like what I'm doing. Ah, okay, so it did give me some platforms. This guy's like, nope, you shouldn't do this. And I'm like, I get, I'm going to steal your stuff. Haha, <laughs> you shouldn't have come here. I now have two shinies. And I'm going to bring those shinies back to the gate made out of my mom. And now here... I'm kind of surprised they didn't make that gate look a little bit more like it's leading to another place. But there it is. <gasps> Lako Lucian says that imagining uh, having that scarf in real life, it would be useless for most situations, but fun to show off. Yeah, so it, like it's like it's actually a little bit like the abilities you have in, in Relicta, which I just recently played, um, where you know it's like. You can imagine practical uses for it, but in the world of the game, you know, it's because they're building puzzles out of it, it feels like it only does these very specific, narrow things. So it's like, it's great for solving the puzzles, not really that useful for anything else. Compared to get to something like, you know, web slinging in Spider Man. Okay, so I got two more. And we've got, what, four more to fill? So am I going to get... Let's see here. How, so I've already gone through that door. They've just opened this door. And it looks like there's room for another door in the green place. So here's my question. Should I... I mean, when I played Relicta, I was kind of surprised at how long that first level took. And then there's this implication from looking at the overall map of the level uh, of the game that there were lots and lots of levels of that scale, uh, and the game was huge. I don't know if that's the implication I should take from this. That like this is only the first level, and once I complete this gate, we're gonna go to another place that's even bigger, or is this 
a cute small game and this is the only game we're gonna fix that gate and then the game will be over i genuinely don't know which um do these three bubbles here mean that let me look back here oh look at this so i collected two dark collectibles and you notice there are two empty bubbles here i must have missed a dark collectible and each of these places is going to have three. But it looks like... Okay, there's six empty bubbles here. Oh. Oh. Oh, look at that. I can... Okay, that blackness that was gathering on my feet? I actually feed that into that central thing to fill out its bubbles. And it looks like I don't actually need to get all three in each level. It looks like if I get two from each level, that'll be enough to fill this up. Okay. And so, and they'll together, they'll sort of tell a story. Like I could probably, I'm imagining I, I could probably replay the cutscenes that I saw in here and see it tell a story. Oh, wait. Oh, it emptied them. Oh, okay. So maybe I do need to get them all. <laughs> Lacolisian says, I know where the missing one is. The swing puzzle we saw earlier where you got the first theory. Oh, you know what? Before we move on to the next level, let's go back and see if we can find what Colisian is talking about. Oh. Oh. Uh, replay the level from the beginning. I see what they're talking about. Now that I'm looking back... I did make a lot of irrevocable decisions in that level, and there were a lot of one-way paths. And so just going back to the level and having everything be um, the same as I left it and be able to explore and find stuff, yeah, that's not going to work. Let's, let's not do that. Um, maybe if I get super into the collectibles of this game and I want to go back, fine. But yeah, so I was kind of hoping that maybe there was a version of the level where everything was open and I could go back after beating it and just get the collectibles, but, and maybe even use abilities in earlier places where I couldn't use them before. So the coalition says, so that means you had to go back before capturing that last guy. Maybe I, it must be, yeah, that I had to find a way to get to what, I don't actually remember the place you're talking about coalition. I forgot uh, where, yeah, what place you mean. But yeah, it does seem like I would have to go back uh, in order to make that work. So that's that's interesting. That is pretty interesting. Okay, so I am... So we just beat that first level. I, I feel like this episode was kind of short, but I kind of don't want to start a brand new level right now. Uh, and I'm, I'm also a little bit hungry, so why don't we take a quick break? Let's let's end this episode right here, even though I think this might be kind of a short one. And uh, and then I will I'll go have a snack real quick. We'll come back and we'll keep playing more scarf and see what the next level is all about. Um, okay, so Coalition says that the place that he's talking about is the place where I first found the floating hooks that, that I needed to go. That there was some place I needed to maybe backtrack in order to to find uh, yeah where to where to get a collectible. So yeah. That's a little bit replaying something that you've already played before, like from the beginning, including all of these sort of tutorial level challenges that can, I mean, I like revisiting old areas to get more stuff that can feel good sometimes, but if all of the puzzles are reset and I have to solve them again, especially the very elementary puzzles that I've now feel like I've mastered, that can be time. That's like, I was willing to go back if it was just going to be open and I could just explore. Uh, but if I have to redo the puzzles, that makes me not want to do it. Uh, but I guess, you know, I mean, it's okay to have stuff that's there for players who are super hardcore about the game and do want to play it again and again. Um, but, yeah, the Coalition agrees that time-wise and, and, you know, attention-wise from the audience, it doesn't seem like it's worth it. But I am interested in seeing uh, where else this game goes in the next level. So I think I am going to continue. So let's wrap up this episode with a subscribe button, with a link to the next video. Uh, and if you're watching later on YouTube, you can stick with us uh, and see what where this game goes next but I'm going to go get a snack first.